Hey, Backlog Kids, and today, we're going to take a look at what might be, in my own humble opinion, the best grunt kits. Introducing the HGAC Leo from New Mobile Report Gundam Wing. Well, these little fellas are actually the P Bandai variants of the standard retail Leos, which is why they are in different colors. Except for this little fella over here. He's actually an NPD. Yeah, that's right. I know what you really are. But basically, he's still a Leo, so let's throw him in there too. Why not? Now, if only my Leo S didn't get delayed, then this would have been the ULTIMATE LEO REVIEW as of 2021. But I guess let's just settle with the LEO MEGA REVIEW. And no, I didn't buy these guys because I pre-ordered the Leo S and thought it would be awesome to have a squad of Leos. Shut up. Okay, maybe I did. Please help me. Anyways. Leo Mega Review. 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 So to start things off, here's my personal Leo fire team without their commander that got delayed. Don't worry guys, he'll arrive, eventually. And as you can see, they are just recolored depending on what type of Leo they are. The standard one would be the green one with the brown frame and red sideburns. This guy would be the one you see in the standard release, and the P Bandai variant is the one that has to complete the weapon set. By the way, the retail HG Leo only costs 1080 yen, which is awesome for army building. I've already seen some people online with an army of them. And what's great is that the Leo uses the fine build system, similar to the 30 minute mission line, which makes it really easy to build them as they are laid out in the runners intuitively. I've built 4 of these guys. By the time I'm building the second one, I didn't really need to look at the instructions anymore to build the core Leo, so my build time is shorter than usual. Anyways. Other than the green one, the other P Bandai variants are the flight type, which is the blue boy here, and the space type, which is this purple boy over here. Oh, and here's the NPD in gray. I've gotta say, I'm really digging the white on the side of the head. It really pops out. So if you're thinking about buying a Leo NPD because you want a gray Leo, here's what it looks like. Comes with all the parts a standard Leo would come with. You're welcome. So you've already probably noticed that the NPD Leo has a yellow visor compared to the others, which are orange. That's because this one has a colorless clear part, while the others have orange clear parts for the visor. The yellow you see behind is part of the sticker sheet that came with the NPD. It's not really pre-cut so you'll have to do some manual cutting yourself. Pro tip! Grab any extra foil sticker sheet and cut off the silver to the shape of the visor and put them behind the orange clear part so that it will shine when hit by the light. Trust me, it's a massive improvement compared to the one without it. Moving on, these guys are pretty color accurate so they didn't include any stickers for the after colony Leos. It's so color accurate that even the soles of the feet are color separated. You don't see that in most HD kits. As I've mentioned before, the build is pretty simple and intuitive and the kit really does feel solid when handling. Since they are grunts, the design will be very simple yet looks really great. A very nice minimalistic design. There are barely any seam lines here and the one seam that you'll notice is the usual torso seam plus the ones on the forearms. Overall, a solid representation of the Leo in kit form. Off to a very good start, I would say. 
now let's get into checking the accessories and man oh man these guys are competing against the crossbones for the accessory count so before we get into it we'll indicate which accessory comes in which kit with these neo heads olive green for the standard dark green for full weapon set blue for the flight type purple for the space type and gray for the leo npd right let's start off with the 105 mm rifle or the drum gun this is the standard issue rifle given to most of the leos if you encounter a leo he's probably carrying one of these the rifle is detailed nicely and has a perforated barrel design which i love by the way the gun is also color separated and the drum magazine can be removed which is just awesome. Next up is the shield which can be mounted by replacing one of the shoulder armors. Be careful not to snap the parts when replacing though. Just as the rest of the core Leo, it is color separated and holds two beam saber hilts on the inside which is a very cool way of storing them. One thing to note is that the beam saber hilts feel awkward to mount in the shield as it doesn't plug all the way in and is a bit tight, so I recommend not to fiddle too much with that. They do come in with your standard beam saber effect parts, but they are the short variation, which kinda makes sense given that they are grunt momo suits. There is also a handle that can be grabbed by the Leo if you want the shield to be handheld. Next up, we have the parachute pack, which is this piece of plastic over here, and is mounted on the back. This is exclusive to the full weapon set and also comes in brown. Well, technically it's a spare part but you can still use it. To plug it in, you'll need to remove the cover on the back and plug it in there. I recommend using a part separator since it is hard to get that off by just using your fingernails. By the way, if you don't already have one, definitely pick one up as it's useful for a lot of stuff, not just gun plug. You'll thank me later. Anyway. The parachute pack is just a backpack and it doesn't really come with an actual parachute. It's about as thick as the booster booties, so there's that. Next are the open hands which are also exclusive to the full weapon set and it comes in brown and green, the latter being spare parts only. The open hands and parachute pack come in the same runner which is why they come in these colors. I think they just put those in the kit just for something new in the full weapon set. It's a bit disappointing how this didn't come in with the standard Neo as it is just a small runner and also doesn't have its own hand covers. But anyway, open expressive hands are always great for posing. Since we've already removed the cover for the hard point in the back, let's check out the other backpack starting with the flight unit. It's mounted in the back and has some nice points of articulation. It comes in with some nice details and is color separated in some parts. Usually when mobile suits have flight backpacks, they tend to have thin wings, but this one has got some chunk. And I like that it feels like it would be able to lift a mobile suit. Also, it comes with these missiles attached to it. Well, looking at it closer, they look more like bombs as it doesn't look like they have thrusters, which I think is the first I've seen in the Gundam universe. The flight pack is meant to also have these leg boosters paired with it to complete the Leo flight type. These can be mounted at the hard points in the thighs, which has covers. Grab your part separator. The peg is square, so you can mount them horizontally or vertically. That said, it does look great with the flight unit mounted and really does look like it will make this Leo fly high. Also, it has color separation, which is great as Bandai could have just left them in one plastic and be done with it. Next, we take a look at the space unit backpack. Simply swap it in at the back and there you go. Looks like it's about to go camping outside with a sleeping bag. Nothing really special here as it is just a backpack and it doesn't really do much. To make it into the Leo space type, you'll need to replace the shoulder armors with these, which I think are shoulder armors with thrusters, similar to the backpack. Which makes sense for mobility in space. I like how they make the equipment seem realistic for these guys, really feels like they're military weapons of mass destruction. Anyway, these shoulder armors are color separated and mount a bit differently than the other shoulder armors, as the pegs plug in deeper and you'll do a bit of assembling. 
I feel like it's designed so that the black parts won't fall off and get lost in the void. Anyways, while we're on the topic of shoulder armors, let's look at the shoulder cannons which when mounted turns your Leo into the elusive Leo cannon type. To attach these, mount these bases first and then plug in the shoulder cannons. This one is a bit tricky to attach since the braces would move when you push down the shoulder cannons. So recommend you removing the arms first when you try to attach them. They definitely add some bulk to your Leo and will look like it has tanks for shoulders. They even rotate. So that's about it for the armor equipment. And next, let's check out the plethora of extra weapons these grunty boys can bring in the battlefield. Let's start off with this variety of beam rifles. We have the colony type, the short type, and the long type. Their design is blocky from the stock and when it goes to the barrel, it becomes cylindrical, which gives them a unique design. The short type and long type are basically the same with different lengths for the barrel, and the long type having a handle on top. Meanwhile, the colony type will have a scope, a smaller magazine, and the barrel can be switched between long and short type. Next up, we have here is a bazooka with a very nice design. What I love about this design is that it has a sensor module attached to it at the side and has a short barrel giving off a Destiny rocket launcher by. Unfortunately, you can't switch the sensor and handle on the other side but will look fine if you decide to put them in the left arm. Next, we have this beastly weapon called the Mega Beam Cannon. It is almost as tall as the kit itself. It does have a weapon design that you'd find from Halo and will have plenty of details like the rest of the weapons. Anyone played Halo Infinite yet? <laughs> Man, the multiplayer is so much fun. Okay, anyways, the other arm can support it by using the movable handle giving off that BFG vibe. I mean, look at that. That looks awesome. Definitely my favorite weapon from these kids. And last, but most definitely not the least, the Dober Gun also known as the tall piece gun. Well, that's what I call it. But moving on, you can mount this bad boy at the shoulder through this brace and have him mount the shield on the other shoulder and BAM! Tall geese light. The Dober gun can be attached to both sides of the kit so if you have two of them, just like we have here, you'll have this double Dober Leo. Another weapon to surpass Metal Gear. But since it is said that only the Talgis can handle the recon of this gun, imagine having two. Little guy will be flying off to the opposite direction. Since we have the Leo NPD in here, let's check out his accessories real quick. But before that... Alright, so the only thing that would be different from the standard Leo is the upper torso and the head. The rest of the body is all Leo. So, any weapons, even the backpacks, can be equipped by this guy in NPD form. This little guy will have 4 head variations as well as 3 pair of shoulder armors. Here they are side to side, with one having biker helmet design, a cyclops with a british cop helmet, a maganak helmet, and a cylinder head. Honestly, I like the cylinder head the most out of these. It just has something about it I really like but couldn't put my finger on it. The heads come with a foil sticker sheet with red, blue, and yellow options. But it's better if you paint with clear paint as stickers in curved surfaces are just horrible. Anyways, here are the shoulder armor parts and yeah, they're different shapes. Nothing much to say about them but if I had to pick, I'd pick the irregularly shaped one. You can position it in a way that they look like tank top sleeves, revealing the bolter shoulders. Another thing to note about the NPD is that it has a backpack that has multiple hard points. But backlog kids, I only see two, you would say. Well, this one has a hard point cover too, and if you remove it, it reveals three hard points. And if you remove the thrusters below, there will be another tree. I didn't bother to remove the ball joints cause they're stuck in there. But if you remove them, there'll be 8 3mm holes in total. So that's all the accessories you're gonna have for these Leos. Man, that's another handful. They're all great to be honest, except for maybe the option parts for the NPD, which I didn't really care for, but having a grey Leo is just so cool. 
let's now take a look at the articulation starting with the head which has none well it is on the ball joint but it's pretty useless here i did find someone online put some articulation on the head by shaving off some connection points inside so it rotates sideways but i didn't really do it to mine it's fairly easy to do so just look it up if you're interested the torso has two ball joints so it has some ab crunch and some side to side this does tend to pop off from time to time especially my npd so there's that bottom part of the torso is on a peg so you can swivel side to side but not the whole 360. shoulders move forward like so and it's on a ball joint arms can move out like so and what's interesting is the slots where the shoulder armor is attached to has a sort of inner frame so they tend to stay in place even when moving the arm bicep swivel over here single joint elbow with a nice bend and is on the ball joint side skirts are on the ball joint and can move around a bit front skirt should be able to move up and down but is really tight they're small enough to not interfere with the legs too much, so it's really fine. Legs can tilt and can do the splits, no problem. They can also kick all the way front and a bit backwards. Thighs are on a ball joint and can swivel a small range. Beautiful double jointed knee with nice knee armor separation. Ankle armor is on the ball joint and really likes to pop up from time to time. Finally, a ball joint for the feet. Articulation is fantastic and you'll definitely be able to pull up awesome poses with these grunty boys. Just bear in mind that some parts tend to pop off, especially the ball jointed parts. Oh and that head with no articulation which reminds me of the old Batman movies. Size comparison time and here it is side to side with an average sized Gundam. As this is from the Gundam Wing universe, it is smaller than the Beyond Global RX 7A 2, as the mobile suits there tend to be smaller. Now, compared to its cousin, the Mercurius, please help that video out, guys, come on. It will just be a bit smaller with a couple millimeters in difference, not counting the antenna. Thought they'd be the same height, but what do you know? And finally, here it is with the narrative Gundam. Obviously no contest here, so yeah, this will fall under the small boys category in the size department. But it's a bit fitting since they are grunt mobile suits and are not meant to outshine the main suits in the series. But honestly, this kit just blows the other kits away in my opinion. Overall, the Leo in itself is a great kit that I would definitely recommend to anyone, even to people who are interested to try the hobby. Standard retail Leo comes in cheap, easy to build, and is color accurate. A fantastic kit out of the box. Even the NPD version is a great alternative, it just costs a bit more at 1200 yen. But it will give you a great color version and a couple of extra parts you could use to customize your own Leo. With that said, the P Bandai variants offer more optional weapons and armors but will surely cost more due to their exclusivity. If you can find a decent deal, I definitely recommend grabbing one of these P Bandai variants as even just one of them can supply a squad of standard Leos with different sets of loadout. Leos are the best grunts, no questions asked. So that's it for the review. Thank you so much for stopping by. If you liked the video, give us a thumbs up. And if you didn't, give it a down and let us know why in the comment section. Consider subscribing if you like what we do. And don't forget to ring the notification bell so you won't miss a video. Join us again next time for another Backlog Kids Review. Oh hey, you're still here? Thanks for being a champ and staying all the way to the end. If you like this video, why don't you check out another HG Gunpla review over here? Or maybe whatever YouTube decided to put over here. Either way, hope you enjoy them. Video Mega Review Back Kids!